This is a very, very small snippet of a much, much larger story. When you have opportunities like that, you, you just say yes and do your best. Time's tight, but we can't speed things up. Documenting it as you go along and making sure that you've actually got that journey covered because it's almost as interesting as the actual final product. We really want to make this as, as good as it can be, really, on a world-class system. So uh, we're here today uh, shooting with the Underwater Realm. The idea today is to shoot a uh, basic behind-the-scenes concept that could go on a two-page two spread of a magazine. So we really want to include everyone of the crew. I'm busy doing the entire setup of one of the scenes uh, for the Underwater Realm. And uh, it should be a pretty big thing. Uh, we got people coming in throughout the day, so it's going to be really, really messy. Uh, but uh, it should be, should be pretty doable. We, uh, it's going to be a big, big, big composite um, image. So we're going to be shooting people in groups of two or threes. So we're uh, about to get in the water. Um, we're just dropping some light panels down there. So these are the LED lights that we built uh, specifically for underwater use. Uh, this is their first use in anger, um, underwater at least. And so uh, we're just getting those down there. We're going to get some strobes up on the surface. And we're just going to really start getting everybody in the water, getting everybody relaxed, working together, and then we'll start creating some magic. So it's, uh, it's all good. It's interesting not being the director for a change. Um, I'm really uh, kind of producing and just swimming around today and letting Ben create some magic. So looking forward to see what he comes up with. Um, my name's Amanda and uh, I'm an actress. You're reckless, you're young. You don't like playing by the rules, but these guys are in charge of your safety. So my name's Sam Still and I'm here to help out with the underwater realm as one of the Atlanteans. Now, Tenos here, He's the biggest and the baddest in the village. Uh, my name is Daniel Naimi. I'm an actor and uh, I'm one of the uh, Atlantean warriors. My character is Tenos, who is the major headhunter, one of the major main bodyguards for the queen, the princess in the story. A bit nervous because I've got the uh, world record <laughs> breaker here. Eight minutes he can hold his breath. Again, a, a long time ago I did manage to hold the British record at 8 minutes 19. It still stands, but that was back in 2004. I'm not sure I can live up to that, but uh, I'll give it a good crack. It's going to be quite interesting with all the hair, the trousers, everything. Not quite used to that, but it's going to be fun. Hi, I'm Samantha Ken. I'm the costume supervisor. Um, my job is to help the costume designer and costume design assistant create the costumes. Um, so, uh, the guys that you're seeing here today, uh, their trousers, we literally made the fabric a couple of days ago. They're made out of uh, latex uh, with uh, calico in between, um, and then they're painted up, and they were made from moulds. Uh, so now I'm just adding a bit of prop costume, um, and yeah, then we're ready to go. My name's Dani, and I'm the hero makeup artist, and um, my job role really is to design and to apply all the um, hair and makeup and the prosthetics that we're going to be using. Yeah, it's um, been a real challenge actually to design all the makeup and the prosthetics that um, are being used, especially with the wigs, because, um, because of the buoyancy underwater. So each wig has to be weighted appropriately to each actor, so it's quite technically difficult. So my name's Rich Stevenson, I'm an underwater cameraman. 42 years of age and I'm helping out with the underwater realm with their filming and I remember listening to Dave's brief and Eve's brief about you know what they were trying to do and it just, just really gripped me I just thought I've got to be involved with that. The challenges of filming underwater are light as they are with anything really you know it's getting enough light on the subject especially when you start shooting high frame rates you know you effectively you're closing the camera down it needs more light so actually Filming or using the equipment is, is actually straightforward. It, it's getting the light on the subject uh, and making sure that it's you know, well framed. What we got going though is a couple of strobes, uh, daisy chain, so uh, we had a bit of problems triggering the strobe, so now we have one strobe pointing upwards, hitting the strobe over here that's sending the light all the way across the room towards our 500 watt link star, link star that's going to be providing the main backlight. Um, we've done some quick tests over water and uh, what this tells us is that we have um, enough power to overpower whatever underwater lights we've got going, so that's uh, really, really good news. Um, it means that we got, we're going to be able to dial the power up and down to match whatever set we need. So uh, we're going to be doing some more tests um, as we go, 
Um, minute things are ready, we're going to be popping underwater and getting some models in as soon as possible. So hopefully within the next 30 minutes, one hour, everything takes longer underwater. So we'll see. At the moment, obviously, there's a big craze with the shallow depths of field thing, um, adding depth to your images underwater. We don't really have to worry about that. They've already got that volumetric um, water, which is giving you that depth. So um, it's a real advantage because it means you can stop down. You don't have to worry so much about focus. It's one less thing to have to deal with because obviously everything underwater becomes much, much harder. Um, so by giving yourself a slightly greater depth of field, you still are achieving that nice depth to the shot. We've all had to just kind of learn on the job really um, and these guys before they started making the film no one had any dive qualifications or experience um, so it's been quite an interesting experience of just learning as we go along um, and as a result of having a small crew and doing everything on a tiny budget it has meant that everyone's really got to get involved and figure everything out right now we're ready all right, so we're here. We're um, we're pretty much done. We've waited until the sun guns. We got we did a couple rehearsals. We're gonna go in and we're gonna do our composite shot right now. Um, since there's no more ambient light coming in, we got extreme control. It's great. We have um, three strobes in the background acting as um, the backlight, and we have the, the front lights in the well, the rest of the lights in the front, the video lights that are gonna act as the rest of fill. So um, we're gonna try a couple of things. We're gonna do it on one shot where everyone's gonna jump in and we're gonna see if it works. And uh, if that doesn't work, we're just going to do it individually and we're going to comp it back in. So uh, we have a lot of stock footage from this morning's shoot, which is great. And uh, there we go. So we're pretty much ready to go. I just switched out my air tank. Um, uh, optically, we have one strobe on the bottom flashing up to one strobe on the top that's flashing over to another set of strobes over there. So it's a big daisy chain of strobes and it's working great. So see you in a bit.